That's the advantage. Isn't it? All right, everybody. Sooner we start, the sooner the real business can begin. And that's after we get done. How you doing, Alan? Mm -hmm. I know, I've got Noah doing it. I've asked Noah to do it, so it's, 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 un it's under control, so, unless Noah's left. Yeah, I can, hey, give it here and I can just throw it from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the, yes. So, yes. It's water, it's water. Good water, though. Um. All right, good evening, everybody. This is going to be fast and furious because the last three or four months have been outrageous. Um, we gave a, a town hall, had a town hall and an update at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference. Everything I'm going to be talking about has happened since that town hall and will happen in the future. So I have uh, just a list of what the current executive committee looks like. We have Dana and Noah and Jerry Sanders. Uh, Louise was here, but she's left. And Sam was here and left as well. But we do have a few executive committee folks still with us to the bitter end, maybe. Um, but uh, this will change uh, in, uh, in March, and I'll get to that a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a brief outline of what we're going to talk about, and this is going to take two slides. Uh, things are being, uh, a lot of things have been happening, as I said. Um, some things are still developing. So we're going to start off what has happened since LPSC and now. Uh, that's what's outlined on this particular slide, and then I'm going to go through and give you a little bit more detail about what has been going on uh, since then. Um, so you can see here that uh, there is a number of uh, special or specific action teams that have been requested. Uh, teams are being formulated to address those, and uh, also there are some workshops, uh, or a workshop that is coming up, that has also been requested. That will be a uh, joint survey league workshop. And I want to give people a reminder about the Lunar Data, data Analysis Program. Um, that is, could be more subscribed than it is. So I want to make sure that you get the dates for that. And we'll get these out over the Lunar Listserv as well. So, um, so it's been, been a full, full time since that, starting right after the town hall at LPSC. We were very fortunate to have Moon Express uh, sponsor our networking event. And those of you that haven't been to that, we get a bunch of old farts from the lunar community to go along, and they are forbidden to talk to each other. They have to talk to people that are at least 20 to 30 years younger than they are. Um, otherwise, they get severely reprimanded. So this is a way to break down the, uh, the barriers. We talked about how do you break down the barriers for the new, next generation. Uh, this, is, this is how we do it, and last, uh, last time Moon Express sponsored it, so we had uh, beverages and nibbles to go along with it to sort of help the uh, breaking down those barriers. And when I counted, one time I counted 145 people at the event, and there were comings and goings um, that I didn't keep track of, um, so that's why I put more than 145 at that particular event. It was very well attended and I think everybody had a good time and a big thank you to Moon Express, who I have promised to sponsor the uh, networking event at the next LPSC. Um, so thanks again to them. Uh, from there, we had uh, league involvement at the New Views of the Moon 2 workshop in uh, Germany. Uh, this is a, if you don't know what it is, we have the New Views of the Moon book that came out in 2006. This is the follow-on from that. 
because that book, for example, doesn't contain anything, much information about the water story that has been evolving uh, about the moon. So uh, it needs to be updated. There have also been a lot more missions as well. There's a lot more data. We heard Noah talk about um, the LRO effort. And uh, this was to get further input into the chapters that, have, uh, that were decided upon at the first New Views workshop at the LPI. Um, and you can see we had uh, about 100 people attend this. They were 100 people registered. There are actually more that attended because we had a few gate crashes. But that's okay. Um, we're not going to be picky about that. But uh, they, these chapters have now been uh, being fleshed out. We have a timeline uh, for the uh, chapter's first drafts, and it's coming up close to September. So uh, the chapter leads beware. Um, we also then, uh, we instigated a commercial advisory board a couple of years ago in order to better integrate the commercial lunar aspects to, uh, to the science and, and engineering side that we, we also uh, profess to represent. Um, and this has started to take off uh, quite substantially. You can see from the list of organizations uh, that I have joined the, the, the CAB, that uh, things are starting to, uh, to happen. We had our first Back to the Moon um, workshop for the CAB in June, June 21st, 22nd at the uh, LPI. Uh, this was uh, well attended. There were about 30 to 35 people there, um, and primarily uh, from the commercial, uh, some NASA folks there as well. And uh, we came up with a, with a series of findings that will be on our league website. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to read through one of these verbatim. There was four findings uh, that came out of this. They'll be, if they're not on the website now, they should be within the next couple of days. But this was then forwarded on to uh, Jim Green, Planetary Science Division, uh, because he had made a request to us about, well, what are the capabilities of the commercial sector right now? So we were able to, uh, to talk to the guys at the, uh, at the meeting, and this came out, uh, and you may have heard of the Moon Express uh, announcement, 12th of July, that uh, they have now developed a sample return uh, spacecraft that will go to the Moon and bring back samples. So uh, that will lead into to other things as well. So that, that was finding three, um, looking at payloads, buying payloads, transportation, um, and then actually formalizing, A, what do you mean by a public-private partnership, but start to look at these in more detail in terms of being able to get back to the moon with a regular cadence rather than once every four or five discovery rounds. So uh, the conclusion was that at least in the cab, the people who were there, there was a lot of enthusiasm for, for the getting back to the moon, but also uh, for the future of changing the paradigm of uh, how uh, lunar science and exploration is, uh, is actually conducted. So this uh, turned out there was a lot of, I say, a lot of enthusiasm for this, and we want to maintain that. And since that time, we've had a few more people actually request to join the CAB, and it's open. So come, come join, come be included, and uh, we can move, move this along. Those of you that are on the lunar listserv may have seen the discussion about moon versus moon. Um, I was surprised at uh, uh, how many of uh, the lunatics out there cannot read my emails. <laughs> well, just just let them try post into the lunar L because they're they're under they're they're they've been they've been fine sent to the sin bin, but. Uh, but anyway, it seemed to be that there was quite, quite a, a, a passion for that. So um, I asked George Kramer to draft a letter uh, about the moon versus moon. Um, what I heard from headquarters is that we have receptive ears to change the rules of how the moon is represented. And uh, if you want to sign it, we, it will be available on, uh, on the Lunar L website. I'll send a link out uh, next week uh, if you want to sign that. Send me your, uh, your name, and uh, I will add you to the list. And we will send that on to headquarters. But we will not 
have a discussion about it again on the Lunar L. Uh, it's, um, there's nothing to discuss. Exactly right, George. What? That's okay. Good. Game over. Move on. All right. Um, Sam Lawrence last week um, went to the decadal uh, midterm review and represented uh, the community perspective on where we stand with regards to um, what progress has been made. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the most important things was the, the value that we have for LRO in terms of achieving, uh, achieving some of the decadal survey um, science that is outlined for the moon there. Um, but he presented quite a, a wide variety of uh, um, topics. Um, we will get that pres presentation on our website so you can see it. Um, and uh, it was, seemed to be quite well received. So uh, uh, we will see what happens. But I would urge all of you to start considering what about the next decadal? All right, we're at the midterm right now, but the next decadal we'll be starting thinking about in about three and a half years. So that sounds like a long way away. But remember, Re Resource Prospector was supposed to launch in 2017. It's still five years away, but that seems just, just tomorrow. So, uh, so this will go by quickly. Yes, Carly. that in previous decadals there has not been a strong lunar presence. And we really need to make sure that is not the case in the next decadal. And it, it really takes effort. It takes people thinking about what are the important issues, why is it important to solar system science, and, and getting that vocalized explicitly. Because we haven't done that yes, thoroughly in the past. Last, last decadal survey, the moon had just as many white papers as Mars. Yeah. Um, where was it in the report? Ah, well, they see. Um, yeah, we didn't get our own chapter, that's for sure. Maybe we should have more than Mars next time. But <laughs> it's time to start thinking about it. Seriously, it's time to start thinking about this, just as it's time for LRO to start thinking about the next extended mission oh. proposal. But, uh, <laughs> but, but that's all good. So, uh, but. Uh, Anyway, we'll get, that, we'll get that on the website as well. Um, last week I was invited to go to, to South Korea. Um, Dr. Kim and Dr. Ju from uh, uh, Korean Space Agency were here. I, I thought they, were, they seem to have gone now. Oh, no, Dr. Ju is still here. Um, and I, I went out there to give a, a talk, series of talks about the moon. But one of the things they were interested in was road mapping. They want to develop a road map for their lunar program, and they were interested in how we developed our roadmap there. Um, and, and the thing I can't emphasize enough is that in terms of, of South Korea, the, the KPLO mission is very important. It is, it is going to give us new data sets um, that will complement what we already have. It's going to complement what LRO is doing. And uh, I, I think that uh, for our community to get behind that mission is exceedingly important in order that future missions from South Korea uh, will be funded and will go not only to the moon but to the lunar surface. So uh, I, again, I, I, bring that, uh, I bring that to your attention. And I believe launch date is still next year, Dr. Ju. It will be postponed. Still officially, okay. But it's not canceled, just delayed. Uh, let's not talk about RP anymore. <laughs> okay, um, we had a request uh, to look at um, the advances in science on the moon. And uh, again, this is to take a look at the National Academy's 2007 SCHEM report. We have our resident expert on that, David Kring, who will be part of this. And uh, this is to look at, well, what advances have been made and what do we still need to do? Um, 
Sam, Sam Lawrence uh, and Brett Denevy will co-chair that one. And uh, we're putting that team together right now. Then there's the, the next SAT. Uh, we're unsure when this is exactly going to happen. But again, this is to look at uh, or given an assessment, and it sort of overlaps with the, with the previous one, of potential future lunar science missions that could be carried out shortly. This has a strong uh, leverage on the commercial sector uh, on that, and we do still need them to prove that they can do what they say they're going to do. Um, this one was a bit of a surprise, but we got a request from the International Space Exploration Coordination Group to put together an international SAT um, in terms of being able to coordinate the number of landed missions that are going to the Lunar South Pole. So I didn't quite know how we were going to do that, but apparently there is international buy-in for League to do this. So I put this mission up, uh, this, this slide up here, because these were the timelines and the missions that were given uh, to me when I, I got the request to put this SAT together. So there are a number of, as you can see, there are a number of uh, countries involved with that. A uh, number of different concepts have been pr proposed and um, announced. A lot of them were announced at the GLEX uh, 2017 uh, meeting in, in uh, China in June. So, uh, so this, is, this is what's coming down the pike. We, are, we will be getting uh, information on each one of these missions because um, we've been asked to give our suggestions or input and suggestions on landing sites, orbital plans, payload, complement and instrumentation, measurement objectives, communications architectures, sample return or analysis efforts, instrumentation calibration and or validation, and then data sharing. So this is, uh, uh, this is going to be quite an involved uh, SAT. It will happen on the 14th to the 16th of August uh, at the Johnson Space Center. And uh, as I say, this is an international SAT, so it will be um, pretty much uh, off-site, off but it will be in the Gilruth Center as far as I'm aware. So uh, there's, as I say, there's a, there'll be people coming from each one of those nations to give us uh, their input and perspective to this. Uh, so there will be a lot of cat herding going on. The Lunar Capabilities Roadmap is a product from our last league meeting. And uh, George Kramer and David Lawrence, mostly George, has, have been leading this charge to put this together. Um, all, the, all the input is, is now in. Uh, from the team that was put together, uh, that is being written up with a release date in September. September. So uh, this is this is to complement the uh, lunar exploration roadmap, and it's to highlight the inf the investments that are needed in technology to start the roadmap, go start going down uh, the roadmap path. So it's the the robotic precursor stage for development of the roadmap. Um, we have the League Annual Meeting coming up uh, 10th through the 12th of October. That will be at USRA headquarters in uh, Maryland. And we're looking at science enabled by getting to the surface. But uh, there are three meeting goals. And again, we're looking at the science exploration commercial synergies, um, given the uh, announcements that have been made and uh, building upon our... Um, our, our cab back to the moon workshop. Um, the, there's the uh, facilitation of public-private partnerships and then provide a forum for community input to these processes and uh, updates there along. Now, I don't have a slide because I forgot about this. Immediately after that, there is the follow-up to the back to the moon workshop. That'll be on October the 13th. There'll be a one-day back to the moon workshop two. Um, that will follow on directly after the league meeting at that same location at USRA headquarters in Columbia, Maryland. So, uh, yeah, ran out of slides. There are travel funds available for early career folks. 
Um, this is, again, Servi has, has been a strong supporter of the league meeting, and uh, um, we've uh, now been, had permission from the Hawke family to name these, uh, these, these uh, travel scholarships uh, in memory of B. Ray Hawke, who, who sadly passed away not too long ago, but another lunatic is no longer with us. Then we get to the uh, landing site selection workshop. Now, again, this is, this is something that, uh, um, that Servi has been leading and League will help out with. Um, Greg Schmidt and I will be the, the co-chairs of, uh, of this workshop, and uh, it's going to be held here at Ames. And the, the whole point of this is to basically look at how can we be ready if and when the commercial sample return efforts prove that they can do what they say they're going to do. Do you have a date? I do. Hold your water. I'm getting there. All right? So I do have a date for it. All right? So we do have a sample return mission in competition right now. Sorry, I've got to have a drink of water. And uh, this is uh, Moonrise. So we don't want to put Moonrise at a disadvantage by saying, no, we've got other priorities. So this is our top priority, as has been vetted through the decadal survey. Multiple times. Multiple times, says Carly, and she is correct. But, uh, but again, Moonrise goes, what's next? So again, we have uh, um, a workshop for community input to come up with a prioritized list. And more details are going to be forthcoming because Greg and I just talked about them, and I, I can't remember what we talked about. So. But uh, um, the 10th through the 12th? 10th through the 12th of January, 2018, in this very building? Exactly. So there'll be announcements coming out. We're looking at November 1st for abstracts. And when you submit abstracts to this, we're going to ask you for specific information regarding your chosen or favorite site for sample return. Be warned. But this is another, again, another um, important uh, um, event. Selecting a site for sample return or other factors? In situ analysis as well. Sorry? It's in situ analysis and sample return. How about other, other science activities? You, you bet you do. <laughs> it's yeah. Jack Burns, University of Colorado. Yeah. Who, who are you? <laughs> who am I? I can't remember. No comment. All right. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, I want to bring this up, the, the LDAP, Lunar Data Analysis Program. We do have a mission that is sent back the most data of any planetary mission in history. There's a lot of data there, and yet our numbers of proposals seem to be modest. How about that for diplomatic? Uh, so I urge you to take note of the uh, step one and step two dates and start thinking about what you can submit in terms of research proposals to the LDAP program. If you go to the NSPIRES website, you can find out a lot more details. But again, um, if we don't use it, we will lose it. I'll say that again. If we don't use it, we will lose it. And then we're just going to whine about it, and nobody's going to listen. So forewarned is forearmed. So again, just, a, just what we can use that for. That's the criteria, very brief criteria. There's, there's a rather dense PDF to read, but not too many pages. But again, this is something that becomes uh, important 
if we think LRO is important, who's using the data? Are we using the uh, RNA programs to be able to analyze that data? And it feeds back into extended missions for LRO. So there are consequences. Again, if we don't use it, we will lose it. Can't emphasize that enough. So it's very important to, uh, to th plan ahead. You still have time and uh, get those proposals submitted. So, March next year, Sam Lawrence will become league chair. Yay! And, uh, and uh, again, uh, he will, there will be a reconstitution of our executive committee, and uh, we are discussing how to do that, and, uh, and ex the existing executive committee will be included in that. Um, because we want to see the way forward, and the way forward is we, as we start to get a taste for the commercial activity that's happening, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So, well done, Sam. No good deed goes unpunished. Uh, and then finally, we have the, the final New Views of the Moon workshop. That's going to be held in the April time frame in 2018. And that will be at JAXA headquarters, Tokyo, um, or suburbs thereof. Uh, there will be more information shortly on the, uh, on the web. Uh, there will be travel grants available, um, but you have to read the web to, uh, or read the, read the details on the web about who qualifies for that. Um, the interesting thing is, is that we had travel grants available for New Views Europe, and we ended up with money left over. We couldn't spend it all. Could you maybe, like, uh, tell people when they get the travel grants and do it earlier then? Well, yeah, again, the money did, right, did arrive a little late. I have to remember that. So, but uh, that wasn't, well, I suppose it was my fault. But uh, we, we are going to do better. Apply again. Apply again. Absolutely. Okay, and that is it. Any questions? You got one minute. So. Any comments? Yeah. To the, to the moon. To the moon. Absolutely. And 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 many times. But this is this is the thing. I, w I just want to thank everybody um, for your support of League because um, it's been a busy time. Uh, a lot of you have been called upon to help, and many of you, many more of you will be called upon. Um, as a you know, as a community, we do it as a, we do it together as a community. Um, we're getting there. This is an exciting time. I think again, I'm cautiously optimistic for the future. Um, that we will get back to the moon in some way, shape, or form. Remember, remember, we're already there with LRO and Artemis. Let's not forget that. Well, I, I couldn't do it without the executive committee, so uh, I, I, I do want to recognize Noah and Dana. Can you stand up a minute, please? Anybody else here from the XCOM? No, but I want to recognize, oh, and Jerry. Oh, you can sit down. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I want to thank these guys, uh, Jerry, Dana, and, and Noah, for their help and support. Uh, and, I, and I want to thank the Lunar community because, uh, again, we have a community that is pretty vibrant. It can be more vibrant, LDAP, but, but again, uh, to start thinking about discovery missions. Young folks, talk to old farts, get involved, don't be bashful. Because we may forget your, well, I may forget your name, um, but, uh, but come up and remind me. Oh, we met in the pub. Oh, okay, so it's good. But, uh, but again, this is not, this is one community. We need to get involved together. Don't be bashful. Come to the networking session at LPSC. Um, and uh, again, talk to people, get involved. And uh, you are the future. And uh, we want to make sure that what we leave behind, you can take to the next level. And, be living on the moon, maybe. All right, thanks very much, everyone.